Such irony, huh? Me get up here to get ready to talk following a song entitled Sit Down Servant. <laughs> Dale, why you do that to me? <laughs> Let's bow in prayer, shall we? Gracious God, we thank you for your words that uh, uh, are given to us on this special All Saints Day. The words uh, inspire and empower. I ask now that you take these words that you've placed on my heart. Take them. Wave your holy hands over them so that they might come alive in the lives of these gathered here today, all within the sound of my voice. And may the words of my mouth and meditations of all these hearts gathered be acceptable to you, the one we call our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Once upon a time, there were two brothers who were the terror of their town. As far back as anyone can remember, any time there was trouble in the neighborhood, at school, wherever, you can bet that these two brothers were somehow involved. As the two brothers grew older, um, it was no different. Beyond being loud and boisterous and rude, they cheated on their taxes, and they were dishonest in their business. One day, out of the clear blue sky, the younger of the two brothers passes away. Not being affiliated with any church, the older brother then goes to the local pastor. I would like you to conduct my brother's funeral, he began. And it's important to me, the older brother continues, that during the eulogy, you say that my brother was a saint. Immediately, the preacher responds, I can't do that. We both know that he was far from being a saint. Just then, the older brother pulls out his checkbook. And then looking at the preacher eye to eye says, if you say that he was a saint, I'll write you a check for $100,000. You can give it then to the church. When the day of the funeral arrives, the preacher began his eulogy with these words. We all know the deceased was less than perfect in his life. And then with a slight pause, the preacher continues saying, but compared to his older brother, he was a saint. <laughs> Guillermo gave me that joke, so you can thank him for that one. Harper's Dictionary, Harper's Dictionary defines the word saint in these terms. Persons distinct because of their relationship with God, those set apart and dedicated in their service to God. From this, from this definition, my friends, we can see that the word saint has attached to it this a hallowed title. Clearly, the title is bestowed upon individuals whose lives are lived for God and around the teachings and the life of Christ our Lord. And the names that usually come to mind whenever we think of the word saint are Saint Augustine, Saint Francis, Mother Teresa. As someone once said, like stained glass windows in a church, they let the sun shine through. As Guillermo was said, today in countless churches around the world, congregations are remembering the saints. Not so much the big named saints, mind you, but those who flew under the radar. Many of the saints that are being remembered today that we mentioned today uh, never wrote a book. They never gave a memorable speech. They, they never made the headlines, newspaper, TV, otherwise. The saints that we remember today, the saints that are remembered all over the world today were mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, husbands, and wives. Yes, many of the saints being remembered today never did any of the things that 
society usually associates with greatness. But they were saints to us, weren't they? In their own way, they let the sun, S-O-N, shine through by what they did and how they lived their daily lives. Nearly 25 years ago, two men, George Gallup Jr. and Timothy Jones, set out to find people in our society that lived life-changing faith. Through interviews and polling and questionnaires, the two men wanted to find people who would live their lives with integrity and value and principles and most of all, faith. They wanted to find people who were examples to others of compassion and service. They wanted to find if there really were everyday saints living among us. Several months later, when all the dust had settled, Gallup and Jones shared their findings in a book entitled, appropriately enough, The Saints Among Us. Beyond concluding that there are saints in this very day and time, the two were able to pinpoint some characteristics about these saints living among us. First, first they found out that more saints live in the South than any other region in America, usually and usually work at blue collar jobs. Next, the data led the two authors to conclude that the saints are commonly Protestant and have a high, high school degree or less. Finally, Gallup and Jones concluded that these saints among us are commonly women over 50 years of age. Now, before you corner me after service and tell me how wrong these findings are, let me remind you that this was a study. If you have a beef with the findings, then take it up with George Gallup Jr. and Timothy Jones. But my friends, on a more serious note, I'd like to think that over the years, I've come into contact with many of these uh, saints that Jones and Gallup are talking about. The saints I've encountered over the years, uh, I found live simple lives. Less, and they do less glamorous jobs. They do things that many other people look down upon. They have family. And that family has a great deal because that one person has sacrificed much. Above all, the saints that I've come to know over the years have a great deal of faith. And they have chosen to live out that faith on a daily basis. I know there are saints among us. I know there are saints among us because I've seen them with my own two eyes. But friends, George Gallup Jr. and Timothy Jones weren't the first to single out these commonly common characteristics of saintly people. Jesus did it on a hillside in ancient Palestine some 2,000 years ago. And in words that have come to be known as the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus laid out for us a pathway so that we could become people set apart. And while Jesus explained these characteristics in 10 verses, I think I can sum it up in basically three phrases. First, first, people who are set apart from others display discipleship. They hunger for righteousness. They work for peace. They show compassion. Story has it that a millionaire and an, an industrial Baron uh, came to humorous Mark Twain one day and began talking. Before I die, the man said, I want to climb Mount Sinai and read the Ten Commandments out loud so all the world can hear them. Responding in his own special way, Twain replies saying, why don't you simply stay at home and keep them? You know, there are countless people in this world, and, and you may know a few of them by name, on a first-name basis, that are like that millionaire. They talk a good faith, but seldom do we see them walk the talk. 
They say they're this way or that way, but when it comes down to it, my friends, you know it's all hype for them. Conversely, conversely, there are those that have left this indelible impression on our hearts because they not only, they not only talk to good faith, but they live that faith daily. Their lives were all about being fair with people and treating everyone with respect and dignity. Their life was all about working for that which is universally right and just. Yes, those that have a special place in our hearts this day display discipleship in every aspect of their lives. And because of that, they deserve to be people set apart. A second characteristic that sets an individual apart from the masses is this unwavering trust in God. A neighborhood house caught on fire one night. And a small boy on the second floor in his bedroom is forced to flee to the roof. As his father stands on the ground below outstretched arms, he begs for the boy to jump. I'll catch you, the dad says. But I can't see you, the boy responds. Time and time again, the father pleads with the boy to jump. But the young boy refuses. Finally, there came the words that the boy needed to hear. You can't see me, the dad says, but I can see you. Trust, trust is all about faith in times of challenge. Trust is all about having faith when things are not going well in our lives. Trust is all about taking a leap into the hands of God. And the people we remember today show their trust in their daily lives. When they were poor in spirit, drained from life's challenges, when death made an uncertain house call that caused them mourning and pain, when it seemed that circumstances had placed this target on their back that said, hit here, they trusted They trusted that God not only knew, but cared about them. They trusted that God did not leave them alone. And for this faith, this trust, they deserve to be honored today. Clearly, they are an example to all of us of what our lives should be all about. Trust in God. A third and final characteristic that sets an individual apart from the masses is desire. The desire to be more than a person is. The desire to be more like Jesus. And most importantly, the desire to work at being better. My aunt used to work in a dentist office in my my hometown. And on more than one occasion, she would share her frustration with this one patient that she had that was constantly late for his appointments. At one point, my aunt had reached her limit with the guy. So the next time the man called to say he was running late, my aunt responded by saying, that's okay. We'll take care of, your, uh, the, of the extraction when you get here. However, the doctor will not have time to numb you this time. <laughs> needless, to say, needless to say, not only did the man arrive in a flash, but he was never late again. My friends, those being remembered today hold a special place in our lives. They affected us for the good. More, they affected us more than than we'll probably ever know. The people we remember today were not content with how things were. They knew more could be done. They knew they could do more. Above all, they went about making an impact in this world. They had the desire to make life better for themselves and everyone they came into contact with. So friends, however however one wants to say it, 
the way that Gallup and Jones did, the way Jesus, uh, the Jesus's way, or my way. The message is the same. There are those in this world that deserve our accolades. They deserve our praise. They deserve our thanksgivings day in and day out because they have provided a model for us of how we should trust God. Following the example of Jesus, they provided an example for us of how we should treat others. And one of the most memorable things that we can do on this special day, if not every day, is to remember their example. They were truly people set apart. Let's pray. Grace of God, we lift up once again all the saints on this day, all the saints that live in our hearts. Yes, we raise them up and pray that uh, you have wrapped your holy hands around them. And we pray, furthermore, that their example may live on in our lives. For this we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.